Welcome back this weekend. We got to see House Democrats' response to Republican charges of misconduct in the FBI's Russia investigation. The Democrats' newly declassified document defends the FBI's surveillance of former Trump campaign advisor Carter Page and rebuts Republicans' highly publicized memo alleging partisan bias at the Justice Department. Now, part of the reason that initial memo was so hyped, Kremlin-linked bots seeking to discredit the Russia investigation. The automated accounts designed to amplify political divisions sprang into action on social media, calling for that memo's release. And, of course, they've also gotten involved in this gun debate as well, whether trying to create fake news or amplify fake news. Joining me now is Democratic Senator Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota. She's introduced a bipartisan bill aimed at trying to police social media, at least on the advertising front. Senator Klobuchar, welcome back to Meet the Press. Thanks. It's great to be on, Chuck. All right. Let me start with this larger issue here of policing social media. I know your bill, and it's an attempt to make digital ads part of the campaign finance laws that we have here, that they're, that they're regulated just the same. But can your, would your bill have been able to regulate YouTube and keeping them from spreading this idea that one of the students was an actor, for instance, when it came to the, to the, uh, to the gun activism? There are several fronts that we should be operating on here, Chuck. I mean, the, first of all, the thought of these innocent kids, they get no NRA money. They're just out there telling the truth about what happened, leading to what I hope is going to be a seminal moment in our country uh, where we finally get Congress to act on some sensible gun legislation. They're out there doing that. And at the same time, you have uh, websites linked to Russia uh, that are immediately within hours uh, putting out fake things through bots, saying that these kids right. are paid actors, things that are totally false. OK, so one, come on, administration, put those sanctions in place. They went through 98 to 2 against Russia for this very reason that they were messing around in our American elections. Secondly, on the bot front, separate from my legislation, um, they, these are the most sophisticated companies in America. They have brilliant people working there. I believe that they've got to put more resources. Maybe it means they make less profits off of ads and other things, right. but they've got to put the resources into Facebook and Twitter to stop these bots from dominating the accounts. There are literally tens of millions of these accounts out there right now right. on people's pages. How do you incentivize? And the third thing is... Oh, go ahead. Finish your third point. Sorry. I apologize. No, no, it's just how do you incentivize it? Public pressure, Congress holding hearings, pushing them and pushing them, uh, people realizing that these are fake people, which I'm should starting they be to fine? see on my account. You know, should they be fine, you know, in a super fun fines. disaster? Should Facebook and Twitter face fines if they fail to follow, you know, to purge itself of, of bots, for instance, after the government finds out? I think that would be a great idea, but then you need a Congress to act. And there are too many people that are afraid of doing something about this because we know these sites are popular. Everyone loves putting recipes, cat videos. It's a great thing. But at the same time, there's an ugly side of this. And someone once said that these systems were set up without alarms, uh, without locks, and big surprise, bad guys are coming in and manipulating people. And that is what's happening, and worse, um, literally committing crimes when they tell people they can text in and vote. And the last thing we know is that Russian rubles were spent on ads right. coming out of this latest indictment uh, that the Russians spent a lot of money on paid ads. That's much simpler to regulate, Chuck. You know why? TV, your right. station right now has rules in place. So does right. radio and print. Do the same thing. They got to have disclaimers on issue ads and on candidate ads, and they have to disclose them so the yeah. press and the other candidates can look at these ads and figure out what they're coming, where they're coming from, what they mean. I want to move specifically to the gun issue because you know you you represent a diverse state when it comes to the gun issue, but both with some rural areas. I think of the Iron Range, and I can only imagine. Um, their, their mindset when it comes to some of these gun laws versus those in Minneapolis. It's going to be a different story. As a leader in the Democratic Party, how do you strike this balance? You know, you, you, we were just talking about it in the panel before. How do you strike this balance where some of your colleagues, like right next door, Heidi Heitkamp's never going to be able to vote for an assault weapons ban, but there's some base Democrats who think that's an outrageous decision. What do you say to the base? 
I was up on the Iron Range two days ago, and I was actually quite surprised. When your hosts there and your guests talk about tipping points, that's where we are. I had a number of proud gun owners. We have a big hunting culture here, and I always look at every bill that comes before us, and I think, would this have hurt my Uncle Dick and his deer stand? And what these hunters were telling me the last few days is that they are ready to do some background checks. They asked me why the bump stock bill hadn't passed. Uh, they understand, as law-abiding gun owners, that we need to make changes. Um, and I think these students are going to lead the way and we're going to finally see some action. Um, and when I had those Sandy Hook parents in my office and they told their stories and you think about the courage they had to come forward on a simple background check bill and then the Congress didn't have the courage to pass it, I don't think you're going to see that happen again. I want to see Senator Toomey's bill come up for a vote. Uh, I'd like to see an assault weapon ban come up for a vote. And I would okay. also like to see the work we need to do on domestic violence. You're on Judiciary Committee. There's been a lot of law enforcement errors that have been discovered in the shooting itself, particularly with the, whether it's the FBI. Um, are, what kind of concerns do you have about the FBI's misses here? And what do you attribute it to? I, I'd like to get all the details on this because I think someone clearly uh, made a major tragic mistake in not reporting that to uh, the Miami field office. And the FBI director has specifically come out and said it was a major mistake. In addition to that, you have an armed uh, sheriff's deputy outside of the school, didn't go in, uh, has now uh, left that department. Uh, but you literally had 23 reports about this right. particular killer to law enforcement over the years. So they clearly have, it's not just FBI, right. it's also what was going on on the local level. Well, do you attribute it to anything? Has the FBI uh, got a, uh, the FBI's taken a lot of heat lately on a lot of ways. Is this, is this well deserved? It sounds like this was something that has to have a major change in terms okay. of how they do their operations. If something was reported to a call center and then didn't go to the field office to be checked out, that's right. a mistake. But again, 23 reports to local right. law enforcement as well. So they have some issues here, but that doesn't take away from the fact that if you want to stop these mass shootings like we've seen in other countries, whether they are in a church, whether they're in a concert venue, an outdoor concert venue in Las Vegas, you've got to start admitting, uh, as so many gun owners in my state are starting to do, yeah. that we can do some changes without hurting hunting. And that includes background right. checks, assault weapon ban, and some of these other things we're talking about. Senator Klobuchar, I have to leave it there. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming okay. on and sharing your views. Always Thanks. good to talk with you. Go Olympics. We're proud of our <laughs> Minnesota Olympics, Chuck. Quite a bit. We need Minnesota Curling to do team. well. There you go. We'll talk about it. They have done very Thanks. well. All right. Thank you. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and then click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.